Well, hello, YouTube family. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy you guys are here with us. We just got back from taking the puppies on a quick little walk around the apartment complex just to get them out, just to get me out. I am filming outside. You guys, I have to come out here quite often or go stand in front of a window because there is just zero lighting in the apartment. <laughs> it's so depressing. That's why I'm standing out on the balcony so you can actually see my face. And I didn't like plugging in like 5 million like YouTube lights just to be like, hey, good morning. So anyway, you guys know we are flying out first thing Monday morning to head up to our forever homestead in Alaska. Our little cabin that we purchased a year ago that we have not seen in a year since the home inspection. We're going up for a full week on the property. Cannot wait to share the whole trip with you guys. So I thought, why not start the adventure now and just share us prepping and packing for the trip. We have to go to the store today. I mentioned to you guys on our previous video that the cabin doesn't have any of the essentials in it. We're we're basically gonna be camping at the cabin because there, there's no power yet, it is off grid, other than the fact that we do have a generator that we can generate, I'm sorry, energize, <laughs> generate, energize to generate power to take showers and turn the lights on and stuff while we're there. But as far as like cooking amenities, utensils, pots and pans, bedding, all those things, we don't have any of that at the cabin. So originally we were planning on going to Walmart when we get there to pick up all the stuff we're gonna need for the week. But as most of you know, the cost of things in Alaska is higher than down in the lower 48 already. And then we're gonna you know, add inflation into the mix. And I'm like, that's gonna be a pretty penny. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill an entire suitcase with some of the essentials that we need, like our French press coffee maker, some bedding, sheets, things like that here while we're in Virginia, we're gonna go pick that stuff up and just take it in an extra check-on bag, which will be a lot cheaper than buying it all once we get to Alaska. So that's part of the video. I think I'm actually gonna do like a two-day video. So we're gonna record today and we're gonna to record tomorrow as we pack and get ready for the trip and we fly out early on Monday morning. So with that being said, let's get to this day in a life vlog. So we are dressed and ready to go for the day. We're gonna head out to Walmart, my favorite place in the world, not. But I need to get some supplies for Alaska. Obviously we're not doing anything perishable. We're gonna do all that when we get up there, but we're gonna head out. We do need to get another suitcase too to put all of it in. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. Every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two.
All right, so we're all done shopping at Walmart, thankfully. Um, I don't know if you guys caught the people of Walmart that walked by while Joe was loading the trunk. I think the door was closing right as they walked by. But what, ladies, what are we doing? Like, can we, can we just wear clothes? Clothes that actually cover the goodies. The girl walks by and what I'm pretty sure was a bathing suit cover up that she was wearing as a dress, but it was netted with holes in it. It's netted, it's netted material, like knitted, right? No bra. Anyway, I just look at my son and I'm like, just look away, bounce the eyes. <laughs> it's like, come on guys. And it's just so sad because they don't realize they're attracting the wrong attention that way. You're never gonna find a man worth having when you're dressed like that and that's all he's coming for. Enough of that rant. Anyway, we pulled up to storage for just a moment so Joe can run into our storage unit. We just bought a brand new set of camping dishes and I don't wanna buy new ones. I'm not gonna go up there and buy like all these dishes so we can cook for the week. Like we're just gonna use our camping dishes while we're at the cabin. So meanwhile, I thought I would update you guys on Ollie. If you're new to the channel and this is just you know, the first video that you're seeing, Ollie is a boxer pit mix that we rescued from the shelter years ago. And we've had him for probably six or seven years. He just shipped into our daughter in California last week. And as you guys know, we could not fly him because of his breed. The airlines have a complete list of restricted animal dogs, right? And obviously boxers, pit bulls, all of those that are known to be aggressive cannot be flown. So, and there isn't even any like trying to like pass Ollie off as something else because you can just look at him and see the pit bull in him. So we ended up going through a shipping company, a company that ships animals across the country. And you basically put in what you need and then all these different companies can come in and they can give you a bid and you can choose the one that you want. So we hired this, this lady to ship Ollie, to transport him door to door. She's supposed to pick him up from our house in Virginia, deliver him to Lexi's house, our daughter in California. And long story short, because this is drama. Those of you that watch our, vid our videos every week, you know that I said on my last video, by the time it goes live, by the time this video is uploaded, Ollie should be safe with Lexi. Today, the recording of today's video, it is Saturday. 11 days after this woman picked up my dog and my dog is still not to my daughter in California when she quoted me five to seven days to ship my dog, to transport him. Now, I am completely flexible, understanding, I'm not a psycho. So you tell me he's gonna be there Tuesday, He's not there Tuesday, it's gonna be Wednesday now. Wednesday comes and he's not gonna be there until Friday. Friday comes, he's not gonna be there until Saturday. Legitimately, this is what we've been dealing with. And furthermore, it's not like she even takes initiative to call me and say, hey, we ran into bad weather, or hey, this came up, Ollie's not gonna make it tonight. You know, please let your daughter know not to sit around and wait for us because we're not gonna show up. Like there's zero communications until I reach out and say, hey, what time are you guys gonna be pulling in tonight so I can tell my daughter when to be ready? And that's when she'll say, oh, it's actually not gonna be tonight. It's gonna be tomorrow between, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon and three o'clock, and then that time comes and she's still not there. So, I have been trying to be, my mama always said you get more bees with honey than you do vinegar, right? So I've been trying to be like, okay, Miss Cindy, I understand things happen as long as Ollie's healthy and happy, you know, y'all drive safe. Like I'm trying to be patient, right? But there comes a point where when do you draw the line? When is enough enough? I don't know you from Adam. Are you scamming me now? Are you like a dog trafficker? Like what, what, where's my dog? And she won't even tell me what state she's in. Like I'll ask her that and she'll not even respond to that text, but she'll respond to all the other ones. And I'm like, okay. So finally the last straw, Ollie was supposed to be delivered to Lexi this morning between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. Lexi calls me this morning and she's like, mom, Ollie's not here, and I just got another text from her that he won't be here until 
like three o'clock this afternoon. Now, this just keeps happening, you guys. Like it just, and then it will turn into the next day and the next day and the next day. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done. I basically tell her, you have until 3 p.m. this afternoon to deliver my dog to my daughter or I'm calling the local authorities. I'm reporting you to the website, the brokerage where I booked you. I'm going to report you to the Better Business Bureau. Like I'm trying all the things to try to get her to be like, oh, dang, this lady's not playing. In reality, I'm at her mercy, right? There is nothing that I can do at this point, and I know that. So she replies back with all these excuses. We have all these other dogs to drop off, and I'm like, stop. I don't care about all these other dogs. I care about my dog. And the payment agreement was, and I asked her, how do you want payment? She said half when we pick him up, and then the, the final payment when we deliver him. Well, she never asked me to pay her for, you know, when she picked up Ollie, the first half. So I figured she was busy. She looked stressed out. I'm like, maybe she's just going to ask for the, ask for the full payment when she delivers him. So after I basically went off on her and said, you have till today to deliver my dog. This is the latest delivery time frame you gave my daughter. And I expect it to happen. And I said, you know, if you would have just told me up front how long it really takes you to deliver these animals, then that would have been one thing and that would have been more acceptable. But for you to give me a specified time frame and then just keep stringing us along, not for one day, two days, three days, five days, my dog has been in a kennel for 11 days now, only being allowed to get out to go to the bathroom. We didn't even pack that much food with Ollie because she gave us an estimated time frame, and that's how much food we gave him with a little bit of extra just in case. He's out of his dog food. So he's now having to eat someone else's dog food that's shipping with him, which is probably going to give him diarrhea, right? He's already stressed out, doesn't know what's going on, doesn't know these people, and now you're switching his dog food on him. So it's just all around not a cool situation. She basically came at me and told me that when she gets there to deliver the dog today, she expects full payment in cash or she will not release my dog to Lexi. <laughs> I screenshotted the booking contract where she said half is due upon pickup, the other half is due upon delivery, and that she wants payment through Venmo, which I agreed to because I have Venmo. It's like PayPal. You can transfer through the accounts or whatever. Now she's demanding full payment in cash over $1,000 on a Saturday, and she wants me to write a written statement and get it notarized that I will not dispute the, the cost of the shipment. Oh my girl, you're the one that underbid to get the job, overpromised on the delivery date, can't get your stuff together, and you expect me to jump through all these hoops to get my dog? You must have bumped your head. So I'm like, give me your Venmo account name. I will transfer the half to you now. That should have been given to you when you picked him up, but you didn't give me your account name and didn't ask for it. I will transfer that to you now in good faith to show you that I don't plan on not paying you when you deliver my dog. And then when you get there and you deliver my dog, I will right then and there, before you even hand the leash to Lexi, I will pay the remaining balance. I'm not gonna have... <laughs> I said, good luck getting over $1,000 cash for my 20-year-old daughter. She doesn't have that kind of cash. And she replied to me and said, that's, what's a, that's what a bank is for, honey. And I was like, okay. You don't get to change your payment terms on a whim with your client because you suck and you can't do your job and you have been confronted about your unprofessionalism, your extreme tardiness. Like, that's not the way it goes. So I told her that if she kept on with this mess, we would have a police escort waiting when she's there to deliver the dog. She proceeded to tell me that if I don't give her cash, it's a civil matter. She doesn't have to release the dog to me. It'll go to court. I'm like, what? This lady has my freaking dog. Are you kidding me? And at this point, Lexi's like, just tell her to tell me where she is. Where, what state is she in? Where is she? I will go and meet her and get my dog. Like, what is this lady doing? So in the end, you guys, she's like, I told her, cause I'm like thinking, okay, I am at her mercy. And she knows that there's nothing we can do at this point. And I'm like, 
Look, Cindy, I understand emotions are high right now, clearly. You know, she's given us all the excuses, you guys. My transmission went out. We tried to deliver some dogs and the owners wouldn't answer the doors. We hit a rainstorm. My dog ate my homework. I mean, it was like, I have never seen, she's like the queen of excuses. And I'm like, I don't care. Clearly, this is something you do all the time to people because you're really good at coming. I mean, like a meteor hit the earth or something and delayed her from getting to California. She's had a million and one excuses and it, it's every day it's a new one and my dog just never gets delivered. So I told her, look, I just want my dog delivered safely. I said, please give me your Venmo, Venmo account name. I will transfer the first half to you right now as we speak, and I will give you the second half upon delivery. You have my text, my written proof to you that I will not dispute your charge, that I will pay you the full payment upon delivery. I just want my dog. And she basically came back and was a little bit nicer, calmed down a little bit. I basically was just trying to make nice with her. She was like supposedly two and a half hours away from where Lexi lives. And so today should be the day unless some ridiculous excuse comes up again. But at this point that I'm talking to you guys, I do not know the outcome of this situation. Not only did she delay the shipment so far, so long, but she talked to us like we were dirt, threatened to not give us our dog, threatened to take us to court if we didn't agree to pay her cash instead of Venmo, which is what she originally wanted. It was insane to me that the way that she talked to me. So anyway, hopefully on this video, cause it's going to be a two day video. I can update you guys with good news that Ollie's been delivered safe. But as of right now, I don't have a clue where he is. What are you guys doing? So Joe is packing up the food that we need for the puppies. They're not going with us to Alaska. They'll be kenneled and the kennel has asked for us to package up their daily portions. How many more you got to go, Joe? Don't talk to me. <laughs> you said don't talk to me. <laughs> what was it like 38, 38 individual baggies? Mm, about halfway. I almost said these little guys. These aren't little guys anymore. You guys are little. Yeah, you're a big boy. Oh, oh, but you're so cute. Yeah, you're cute too. We each have an individual suitcase for our clothes and hygiene stuff. And this is gonna be the suitcase for all of our extras. So you guys saw most of the stuff I just bought at Walmart, but we do plan on going to the store the day after we get to Alaska but we are thinking of the first morning at the cabin and the things that are necessities and ugh, duh, coffee is definitely a necessity. And then I do not drink half and half typically. I, I like heavy cream in my coffee, but uh, I don't have a way to keep heavy cream cold with me on the airplane, all that good stuff. And it's just ridiculous to do all that. But we got these little tiny half and half creamer pods for that first morning in the cabin so we can have creamer because I can't have coffee without creamer. And then just a couple odds and ends things, some hygiene stuff. I got these cute little like go anywhere tissue packs just in case, you know, we need to blow our nose or whatever. So I didn't want to bring a big huge box of tissues. So these are just little uh, travel size tissue packs that I'm going to take with us. In the front of the cabin, there's an outlet on the exterior of the cabin that does not have anything on it right now. It was noted on the home inspection, so you know Joe. He's bringing some tools and he's going to put one on there. Got some coffee cups. And of course, we've got our little kettle so we can warm the water for our coffee. And you guys saw we got our French press. So I'm gonna probably wrap this stuff in towels. This is plastic, it's not glass. So we did that on purpose. I didn't wanna travel with glass in there. You know how they are at the airlines, they throw your bags around, they don't care. Of course we got this little propane burner. So we'll get some propane when we're up there in Alaska. Obviously we can't travel with that. 
that that way we can heat our water for our coffee. We could even cook on this, but we can also use the wood burning stove in the cabin. We've got plenty of cut wood already if we need to use that to heat anything up. But we do have this little burner uh, for cooking and heating up the coffee. We can also uh, energize the generator because the stove in the cabin as of right now is electric. We're gonna be switching that out for gas once we get moved in, but right now it is electric, so we can use the stove for cooking. And then of course we have our sheets. So we've got a queen set for our bed in the master bedroom, and then a twin set for Parker's bed upstairs. These are nothing special, just sheets. You know, we're camping out in the cabin, and I don't know how old those beds are that are in there. I don't even know how dirty they are. They look to be in decent condition when we were up there for the home inspection, but we need some clean sheets to put on there. And then of course we're gonna pack some comforters and take uh, at least one pillow, one pillow for each, each of us. I'm gonna bring some extra large trash bags for the cabin and then bug spray. <laughs> it's mosquito season right now, so we're definitely taking bug spray. And then I've got a little thing of dish soap and a new kitchen sponge for washing dishes at the cabin. a lot more that's gonna have to go in here. I still have a load of laundry going. Actually, I've got two loads going. Uh, but I think this is gonna be enough towels and hand towels. And worst case scenario, if we really need them to be washed, I can always wash them in a bucket and hang dry them. All right, so I just made an afternoon cup of coffee. Much needed, mm, with a little bit of whipped cream on top. It's like a, it's like dessert, it's my happy place. So everything is a mess. Everything looks like a bomb went off right now because we are packing. And even though we have all day tomorrow before we leave, I just, my brain, I'm just, I gotta have all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot to think of. Uh, we're up there for a full seven days, flying on one side of that, flying on the other side of that. So a total of nine days that we're gonna be gone, seven full days that we'll be at the cabin. So I have this little bathroom bag that I absolutely love. It's a little hygiene travel bag and I fill it up with all my stuff. Once I'm done, it rolls up and it has these cute little buttons so you can close it. Just keeps everything all in one place. And when I pack, I always bring a little baggie of extra band-aids, I bring bobby pins, I bring nail clippers, some extra hair ties, an extra set of contacts, cause y'all know I wear contacts and that would just be a tragedy if I didn't have an extra set and something happened. But I will be putting all my shampoo and conditioner, my facial cleanser, which I'm just keeping it simple. I'm taking my Tubes & Co facial cleanser. Just gonna do my Tallow Balm facial moisturizer. Smells so good, vanilla and almond. And then my Glow Serum from Tubes & Co. That's pretty much all that I use on my face. You guys know I love Tubes & Co. I've talked to you guys about it before. They're a completely organic skincare company, just a small family homestead that started this business. And their products are nothing short of divine. I'm not a crazy skincare person. I cannot do the 50 million steps in a regimen every day. I just cannot do it. I refuse to do it. I have a cleanser, I have a moisturizer, and then I have the glow serum because I love the silkiness that it gives my skin. And to me, I don't need an eye cream and all the craziness. If you have a good moisturizer, which straight beef tallow is one of the best moisturizers you can get, that is a perfect eye cream for this delicate area around your eyes. You shouldn't have to have a, a totally separate product for an eye cream. So I am bringing these ovulation test strips with me. You guys know Joe and I are trying to have another baby. And August, this month, is gonna be our first official month that we are allowed to try. He had to wait a full two weeks after his procedure before we were medically cleared to try. So I am bringing my ovulation test strips because you guys know that I've been logging and tracking my ovulation every month so that Joe and I can narrow down as best we can that day, that moment when my egg drops for that month. So we can try to be as precise as possible and hopefully make this happen as soon as possible because yeah. yeah. So this is my holster that I got for my 357. I have yet to wear it ever. 
This is my first time, so I will be wearing this in Alaska when we're on the property out hiking. So I wanted to try it on just to see what it feels like. And I like it, it feels good. Get back, bear. Get back, bear. I'll blow you to smithereens. No? Idiot. Sometimes in life I wonder if I'm ever gonna get a break from dealing with BS. So Joe and I are packing for Alaska. I went into the closet and took out a pair of jeans that I have not worn since we lived in the apartment, but I was gonna bring them to Alaska. I pull them out and I look and I'm like, and I told Joe, is this mold? So I smell it and he looks at it and he's like, yeah, that's mold. So we started going through our master closet. <sighs> our things are covered in mold. You guys, there's fuzz growing. Are you kidding me? Yeah, so the crazy thing is for the past few months, I've been complaining to Joe that when I come back here, it feels damp to me. Everything feels wet, even though it's not wet. Like when I take a sweater out of the closet, it feels damp. Or when I get into bed at night, I've been putting on sweatpants and socks because I'm freezing because it feels wet back here. And I thought it was just me. There's clearly some kind of issue going on in these apartments. Another resident, her little girl is Parker's friend. They play together all the time. A few months back, she was telling me that she had a mold issue. Like her furniture was covered in it. She went to the apartment and instead of, I don't even know, they all they did for her was moved her into another apartment. Didn't help move her, didn't offer to pay for a moving company to move her, told her she had one week to move out of the apartment into another apartment. Mind you, this apartment they moved her into is right next to the mold infested apartment. Like it shares a wall. So mold spreads through HVAC units, vents, and all this stuff, we are all connected. So this is clearly an issue, and instead of addressing it, they're just playing musical chairs and making these residents uproot and move to different apartments when this happens. This apartment complex is not cheap. This owner is making millions of dollars off of these complexes here. So to do this to residents and not fix this properly is criminal. Mold is toxic, it's cancer causing. So now, <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I just sent all these pictures to the management office with an email. All the things we found covered in mold. You guys, my my decor piece above my bed, the, the wreath, the cotton wreath is covered in mold spores. I never noticed it before because I never looked until we started seeing this. And now I'm like, we move out of this apartment in two months. So now I'm gonna have to uproot our family and move all this household furniture and everything into another apartment for two months? Joe just had surgery three weeks ago? Uh-uh, they're messing with the wrong one. We're not moving our stuff. They need to have a moving company come in here and move our stuff into another apartment. But then I'm like, is that apartment gonna have the same issues? I, I don't know. So I told them, I fly out on Monday for Alaska. I will have my phone on me. So. Call me ASAP. Like, I don't even know. I, I am just in shock right now that we have been breathing all of this in for however many months. We've lived here for seven months now, but I noticed it mainly in the last few months and I don't know why. I don't know if it's once we got into like the heat of summer here in Virginia, the humidity is ridiculous. And so I don't know if like that's when it started. I don't know. I don't know, but this is not okay. I just want to leave. I just want to move. Like, can I just go to Alaska? Can we just go and not come back? Can we just not come back? Can we do that? Oh my gosh. It's always something. Like Joe is in here going through our clothes and we're pulling out. Baby, don't do that. You're going to inhale more of it. Our jeans are covered in mold. Like every day we come in here and pick out an outfit and we're putting it on. We're wearing moldy clothes. We're inhaling this mold. Like, oh my gosh. I don't know. This is the last thing I wanna deal with. Like if we have to move, pack everything up and move into another freaking apartment for two months, 
that's going to suck. And I'm not going to hang all my decor. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm just going to pack it all up. Like pretend like we're leaving for Alaska now and just keep out the essentials. Like this is ridiculous. I mean, look at this, you guys, these are my Nikes. That's mold. They're covered in mold. Get up. Get up. That is get up. Get up. disgusting. All, this is all the stuff. Like this is not all the stuff, but this is a lot of the stuff that we found. Yeah. Covered in mold. Hats. The backpack is pretty bad. It's like buzz all over it. I've got the windows open, <laughs> trying to air things out. I don't know if that's helping or if that's gonna make it worse just because it's so humid right now in Virginia. But update on Ollie. We do have some good news. He has been successfully delivered to Lexi about 20 minutes ago. You guys, she held my dog captive in her van and refused to give him to Lexi until my Venmo payment, full Venmo payment, went through to her. I'm like, you're treating me like a criminal as if I've done something wrong. Like, I'm, I'm not worth my word and I'm not going to pay you. And you're the one that just did what you did for the last 11 days. She knew she couldn't get him in the five to seven days that she promised. She underbid it. She was like a, at least $1,500 cheaper than some of the other people that were bidding. She knew what she was doing. And again, I have no issue with being flexible, but you need to communicate with your client and say, hey, we were supposed to be in Missouri by today, but this came up and we're actually here. I just wanted to keep you posted. She didn't do that. Ali 100% recognized Lexi and it's the most adorable thing. I'm super happy for him. Lexi said he looks very stressed out though. He does have diarrhea. And I was like, well, yeah. For the different food, the stress that he's encountered being in a kennel for 11 days, except for getting to go to the bathroom, he's gonna have diarrhea, but he's safe and he's doing well. All right, all right, all right. So tonight we have barbecued meat bird. We're eating up the last of our meat birds that we butchered last summer. How many do we have left, Joe, in the freezer? I think we have like two more. So these chickens fed us all year long. The meat is delicious. Joe is picking in the dark on the balcony because he said he doesn't like people to watch him <laughs> while he cooks. Yep. Yeah. Good morning, friends. It's the next day, so it's Sunday. We fly out tomorrow morning, super early. I got up and had coffee with Joe, and um, so forgive me, I've done nothing with myself yet this morning, but uh, filled out our dog application for the kennel because we're boarding the puppies while we're in Alaska for the week. And uh, just had to, they asked me to type up like a page of instructions for the puppies, so I got that all done. But I woke up this morning and looked up at my decor piece above our bed, and then it, I was reminded about the mold the mold that we discovered last night because my wreath is covered in mold spores. And I just was like, oh, I remembered that I have to deal with this as soon as we get back from Alaska. And then I completely didn't even think about it until I was just talking to my mom. But if they make us move into a different apartment because of this mold issue, I have to call all of our bill companies and accounts and change our address because it's a new apartment, a different address just for two months, just to turn around and do it again when we move to Alaska in two months. And not only do I have to do that for our bills and accounts, I have to do it for my nampa, my grandpa, because I'm my nampa's power of attorney, as most of you know. So his bills and his accounts, everything, the mailing address is my address because I pay his bills for him every month. Not an easy task, you guys. I... His insurance company alone, you have to sit on hold for like 45 minutes just to talk to somebody. So I was already dreading doing that for the move to Alaska, having to call all the companies and deal with this again. 
because inevitably some of them like to give me a hard time about the power of attorney. Uh, so anyway, I'm not going to borrow trouble, right? I already know what's coming and I just have to like mentally prepare myself. Um, I wish there was a way that they could address this mold issue without making us move into a different apartment. I don't know though. It's, it's only in the back of the apartment, in our bedroom, our closet. But I suppose if it's going through the air vents and stuff, then the particles and the spores and all of that are probably going through the AC ducts and eventually would work their way through the rest of the apartment. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's a part of me that's like, well, we've lived with it for seven months. Can we just live with it for another two? Like, I just don't want to deal with it, you guys. We have so much going on with this lawsuit, with the Coast Guard, the move coming up. It's, uh, you know, and school starting. School starting right around the corner. When we get back from Alaska, we'll be starting school the beginning of September, me and Parker, with our homeschool. So we'll be ramping up for that. So it's just a lot going on, but I don't know, one day at a time, right? That's how I take it, one day at a time. So today I'm just finishing up the last of the laundry and we're gonna get our clothes packed and that's pretty much it. Last night, as you guys saw, we packed up our, our everything suitcase with all the supplies uh, that we got here in Virginia to take with us. And um, so we pretty much just have our clothes to pack and stuff and then we fly out tomorrow morning. So I don't know, I'm gonna bring a book. I'm also thinking about bringing a blanket that I started for Lexi. I started crocheting her blanket. Let me show you guys. I like to crochet. I am sitting on the floor in front of the window because it's just light. And I've been keeping the bedroom window open, which I never open this window back here, but I'm just feeling like die mold spores, die, like getting fresh air in here. <clears throat> anyway, I love to crochet. My mom pretty much taught me how to crochet. Anytime she comes to visit me, she teaches me a new stitch. But this one I actually taught myself on YouTube. I pulled up a YouTube video and learned how to do this for Lexi. Hi puppies. Her, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, excuse me, pardon me, that's very rude. Uh, Lexi's favorite color is like a Tiffany blue, like teals and everything, so I started this for her. And I thought about taking it with me on the airplane because we have a three hour flight I believe from Virginia to Chicago and then a six and a half hour flight from Chicago to Alaska. So I could probably get pretty far on that thing, but I'm also going to be spending some time typing up my complaint slash review for old girl dog shipper and what she put us through with Ollie. So today we're just going to finish up packing and then I'll probably wrap up this video. I want to maybe wrap it up a little bit early because I would like to try to edit it and get this uploaded to go live for All you guys. Right. Online. So here's our anniversary breakfast. <laughs> Nothing special. Joe made some scrambled eggs, some sauteed onions and bell peppers, and of course bacon. So today is mine and Joe's 23rd wedding anniversary. <laughs> Isn't it Joe? 23 years, and today is also Parker's 10th birthday. We celebrated it a few days ago with his friends because we wanted to get that out of the way before the Alaska trip, but today is his actual birthday. So we had Parker on our anniversary because I was two weeks overdue. P did not want to come out in the world. He apparently liked living inside of his mother. I don't know, but we had to induce. I was two weeks overdue with him. And uh, they said we could pick any date that we wanted. So we, <laughs> I don't know why we did that, but we decided to have him on our anniversary. So every year on our anniversary, Parker also has a birthday. Joe just said that we did it on that date so that he could remember our anniversary. <laughs> there might be some truth to that. So I don't know if I'm overpacking. I'm gonna shut this laundry room door. It's super loud. The house is a mess, you guys. Like. And I have to clean it up because I have a neighbor that's kind of looking after the apartment for us while we're gone, like checking the mail and all that stuff. And yeah, I'm one of those people I like to clean and make sure that it's left in an organized fashion. That way when we get home, I'm not stressed out by a big mess. So in the mornings, it's going to be chilly. In the evenings, it's going to be chilly. And then in the cabin, the only heat that we're going to have when it is chilly is the wood burning stove, which <sighs> I'm so excited to smell 
the wood burning in a wood burning stove again. But I want to make sure that we have enough warm clothes like for when we go fishing and hiking just to make sure just in case there's cool days. So right now I'm working on parking pack parking packers bag. Let's try that one more time. Right now I'm working on packing Parker's bag and I have about, I don't know, let me see. I have like, I would say eight pairs of pants in here. Something about Parker. Fun fact about Parker, he absolutely hates jeans. Just cannot stand them. So he wears a lot of sweatpants. So I have probably a total of like eight pairs of pants in here for him. And I did throw in two pairs of jeans just for, like, we're going to go have dinner with our friends one of the days that we're there. And I just want to make sure that he's, you know, dressed, you know, not nice, but just looks a little bit nicer. So I did throw in a couple pairs of jeans and some sweatpants. I've got plenty of hoodies in here. Uh, I think I packed him, like, five different hoodies that he can choose from for the week. Um, and my thought process is that Parker plays really hard. I know the first thing he's going to do, you guys, is run down to that pond and he's going to be muddy and a mess every single day that he's done playing. So that's why I'm packing him extra clothes. I did take a beanie just in case. Lots of undies <laughs> and lots of socks to keep his little feet warm. And per Parker's request, I did throw in some shorts as well because there are some halfway decent days there in the summer and uh, Parker hates wearing pants. He takes after his dad. So I made sure to pack him some shorts so he's comfy. He can also wear some little basketball shorts for pajamas. And then I have all of his t-shirts right here. I'm washing our bedding with the mold. I feel dirty now. I'm like cleaning everything, stripping the beds. Like I know that's not going to fix it and we're not the cause of the mold. I know that, but I just feel like freakish now. I feel like I'm freaking out about the mold being in the apartment. So I stripped all the beds. I'm washing everything. That's why you're looking at my bare mattress. Would you guys look at this dog? <laughs> Bradley? Your face is so dark. I can't hardly see you all. Are you laying on Parker's little hiking boots? You want to come to Alaska with us? Oh, I wish we could bring you. Soon, buddy. Soon, okay? All right, so I've got my Columbia jacket. I'm always cold. I'm definitely bringing a jacket. It's not like too thick, but it's thick enough. Tripod stand is in there so I can take you guys with me. I've got my hiking boots, I've got my Uggs. So here's the thing. These are my, kind of like my slipper Uggs. Like y'all ladies that have Uggs know they're kind of expensive boots, right? So I have a couple pairs that I don't wear outside. I don't let them get rained on. I just wear them like if we're going places, I keep them, I take very good care of them basically. Well, these ones are used. These are older Uggs. They've been rained on a couple times. And so I kind of, these are like my used Uggs. So I'm taking these as my slippers because I don't want to take another pair of slippers. So I'm going to take these because they're warm. They come up on my leg a little bit. So I'm going to take these and that way when we go outside and we're having coffee on the deck in the morning, I can just put my Uggs on. I've got my hoodies, some different hoodies to choose from. I've got my tank tops. I've got some t-shirts. Got some sweats and leggings. Definitely need some pants because I'm always cold. I am gonna bring one pair of jean shorts and just a couple pairs of like my comfy biker shorts and some pajamas. All right, I think we're all packed and ready to go. I've got my backpack over here with Lexi's blanket I'm gonna work on in the airplane and then my laptop. I'm gonna be editing a video for you guys while I'm sitting in the airport. I think that's it. I think we are finally packed and ready to go. Joe is finishing up his suitcase right now. We've got all the video equipment. We've got the drone. We're gonna play with the drone out at the property and try to get some really good aerial shots for you guys of the new homestead. And I'm just super excited. Like all the stuff, Joe's stuff with work, the religious exemption, the mold in the apartment, all the things that we have waiting for us when we get back. I've made a promise to myself that I'm releasing it and I'm going to fly out tomorrow and enjoy the week in Alaska with my two favorite guys. So 
Next time you guys see us, we will be in Alaska and we're gonna have you guys right there with us. So thanks for hanging out with us the last couple of days while we packed and got ready for this awesome trip for our 23rd anniversary. Crazy how it all worked out just in time to celebrate an amazing moment like this in our marriage. Take care you guys and stay blessed and we will see you very soon. Oh my gosh. Joe, we'll see you soon at the cabin. <laughs>